Topic three, changes in accounting policies. A change in policy occurs when a company changes the methodology or technique used to account for a transaction. This can be mandatory or voluntary. Mandatory would mean that standard setters change the generally accepted accounting principles, the GAAP, and companies must comply, such as the fairly recent adoption of IFRS 15. A voluntary change would be if management decides to make the switch. Voluntary changes can be made when the change results in information that is more reliable or more relevant to the users. Sometimes standard setters encourage companies to adopt changes to GAAP early, and sometimes it is forbidden, generally to preserve comparability and to give some companies time to prepare. This will vary on the standard, and you should go to the GAAP. Uh, so for IFRS, go straight to the handbook. For ASPE, go straight to the handbook and dig in to see what the standard setters have said for that particular standard. So what is not a change? That would include deciding policy for a type of transaction that's never occurred before. That's not a change. That's just accounting for something that you've yet to account for. What is also not a change is deciding policy for a type of transaction that is substantially different from one that previously occurred. So for example, if the method of generating revenue has changed, then it wouldn't be a change in policy to apply the standard to that new stream of revenue. Accounting for policy changes must be done retrospectively. That is, must be applied to all prior years and prior years must be revised. There's an exception. We only account for this prospectively if the information to apply retrospectively is not available. And this is generally avoided. So in that case, companies would often just wait an extra year to make the change. Any voluntary changes must always be accounted for retrospectively. And when you take a step back and think about this, if somebody is voluntarily making a change, then they are saying that this would be as a result of information being more reliable. Well, if you have information more reliable, then you should have it in all the previous years required for the uh, financial statements. So that's why voluntary changes must always be accounted for retrospectively. A question. Summit Inc. is changing their depreciation, depreciation policies to be in line with industry practice. Which of the following will not be affected? Is it A, net PP&E, B, opening retained earnings, C, closing retained earnings, D, PP&E accounts excluding accumulated depreciation? The answer is D, PP&E accounts excluding accumulated depreciation. And that's because if the change is accounted for retrospectively, this would affect the expenses and therefore affect retained earnings in both years. However, the cost of the PP&E, so excluding accumulated depreciation, would not change as it, the value is recorded at historical cost. Great, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.